Hey people, my name is Yannick Mounts and I'm very happy to be back here on Production Music Live. This time with a 30 minute against the clock challenge where I will be using only samples and presets from the everything bundle. So let's start. First of all we have to find a kick. I'm searching for something that is has a nice click in it but is also at the same time pretty tight. Not too woomsy and not too harsh. Just looping one bar. Drag the whole MIDI clip. Okay, so this clap is pretty cool because it's a it's a real clap. It was recorded in a studio environment and was layered on both sides, so it's super stereo. You should like enable the one shot mode because then everything gets played of the whole sample and the ADSR has no um, impact on the sound. So standard dance hall rhythm that right there. Okay, now I'm searching for a clave, obviously. So you, you can just like take the old MIDI clip from your last track and just drag it down and then you just change your, the rhythm, that's the most easy way to do it. Okay, so play with the velocity um, in such in instruments, that's the most important thing. Shorten it up so we get rid of the um, rework tail. So I'm just looking for something that complements our groove a little bit. Okay, enabling the raw mode because I want to hear it directly. So this could be pretty cool. Alright, so if you go into the audio clip and enable the transient volt, like the one arrow just, so you can tighten up the transient right there. Okay, so now we need something melodic. Or just something tonal. I mean they all fit somehow, all pretty cool, but I didn't want to get something too concrete. So let's, let's have a look at the orchestral tools pack. Not what I'm searching for. So we just want to build a, like a, a background ambience, a tonal background ambience. Then you can just go in and loop a part of that. Just messing around there, but it's not working out. And then you just go on and layer those. I mean, they are very groovy, pretty cool actually. But as I said, we just need some pads in the background. Just putting reverb on the first one to make it a little bit more spacey with the reverb. And now 
little bit of side chaining. You can just copy and paste the side chain to all of your instruments, it's the most easy way. Pan it for a little bit more stereo experience. There I'm pretending that I'm grouping all my stuff. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have a tonal um, reference, our pads, we can start adding a bass line. So just uh, scrolling through a couple of uh, patches here. volume a little bit. I'm basically playing an F minor chord down from the C. So let's take that MIDI. Quantize it a little bit. And I didn't like the sound, so let's change it. This one is pretty cool. Later on I'm going to transpose it down an octave, because now it's more like between a bass end and a, a deep pad. Just changing the pads because it's, the transient was a little bit annoying in the beginning. The fastest way to get your layers done and get your harmonies is just duplicate the diva channel and then replace the notes with different ones. Transposing them up an octave. I didn't want it to play all the time, that's why I just deleted some notes. Super loud. So now I'm filling up the chords with fifth of the root note of the bass and octaves, um, unisons and thirds. Looking for a different sound right there. This one is actually pretty cool. is really dreamy that's why I picked it it's not too upfront and it's not making any it's not annoying transposing everything up an octave and now just picking the notes and dragging them down to double them to make it a little bit more fuller the right sound. Sorry guys, took a little bit there. This is a very classy one. 
but I wanted to get rid of the glide because it was too long and uh, get rid of the attack in the beginning because it, I wanted to be just in the background. Enable the chorus to make it more stereo. Just getting the loop a little bit longer there, grouping stuff. So now we need a hi-hat um, to just go, go on in the groove section a little bit more. This one is really groovy because of the quiet 16th notes and the very loud accents on the on the offhead. Worked pretty well in my case. So now we need our classy like two and four clap. clap layer right there and now I'm going to add the real clap. Now the, the whole beat sounds more stable. get a nice lead sound for the song. Just jamming around a little bit. This was too classy housey for me somehow, that's why I didn't pick it. But I think it's actually a cool sound. So just recording that. You can see this like as a little second voice that's just going on in the background and creating interest. Duplicate it, consolidate, quantize. Legato is not working here. I 
I'm panning a lot of stuff because I think in the end you, you, you really get a very stereo mix like that. Now we're getting into the bass region. <laughs> I didn't realize that we were one octave too high all, all through the track. But it worked as well. Just searching for more sounds, more melodic content. We need like a main lead melody now. They were all kind of too hard for, for my tastes. So let's pick one that I've made by myself. So I just wanted to program the sequence because I will program 16th notes and I'm not able to play them tight, actually. It's pretty cool if you create a rhythmic pattern in the beginning and then start to go from there and to add different notes and to alterate the notes. So it's pretty cool if you start like with a, with a standard uh, pattern in the beginning and then start alterating the notes. Um, afterwards to create a nice melody. This helps you if you like feel stuck and you don't know what to click. So now I'll just uh, start to to vary the, the melody line. It's all in the in the key of C minor, nothing special here. And you're just trying to like get some accents because now you got you've got your ground you just try to vary um, now you try to vary the, the notes but not in a rhythmical sense more in a in a pitch sense and you can go on with this how, how long you want really doesn't matter but I didn't have the time for it. So there in the end it's not flowing anymore. There are too many of the same notes. Du -du -dun. It's flowing again. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It's blending nicer with the rest of the track if you transpose it down an octave. Higher octaves will always sound a little bit happier than, and not that cool than deep ones. Adjusting the envelopes a little bit, nothing special. I want to add more percussions to the track. This one was pretty cool actually. And this loop is really giving drive to the whole track and it's the same tonality so it's working out very well. Just 
starting to make a basic arrangement, just duplicating everything. Just cut the kick in the beginning, we don't need it to start with. And then I wanted to start just on one bass note, but of course I, um, I had to adjust the harmony as well. So the first 32 bars, it's just like just on the C and then it's opening up. Just um, doing a little bit of cutoff automation on the ARP. Now you see now it's the harmony is opening up and the ARP is coming in or the main lead is coming in, so that's too much, we have to cut something there. You really want to go slow with your tricks. Like in general, it's just like the sound is too open to start with it like that. We need to close it more. That's what's happening right there. So just adding sidechain to all the channels. automation on the main lead to make it pop out of the mix. So now we are going into the first break of the 64 bars. Cut the kick away. Now you can do a couple of things. Now, of course, so gradually you should like decrease the energy and then increase it again. Okay, now I wanted to double the lead with a, with the second layer. Just go back and listen to your break and you will hear what it needs. So now um, we will automate the volume of the bass so it fades away in the end of the break and then when the drop comes it will be right back. Just grouping a little bit of stuff. Back to the beginning to cut away some drums, which we don't need. We can really start by with an ambience or something. You know, if you have like some elements that are very lonely, they sometimes they only work if they come in together or if they go out together. So just like like with this dancehall clap, it needs to come in with the hi hats and all that stuff. Otherwise, it will sound a little bit like too mechanic. Alright, let's go on. So just creating a little bit of interest there in the beginning of the track. Opening up the ARP. Alright, just naming a couple of markers there, expanding the whole arrangement a little bit further. Cutting away the kick for the second break. I mean you just go in like 16th or 32 bar values and just cut it away. It really doesn't matter that much. If the track is boring at a certain point, you just start to manipulate it a little bit. Okay, so in, I think in the beginning we can even have a little less instruments. That's why I'm cutting the art there. 
So it really comes out of nowhere. So I realized that that opening of the cutoff is too much at that point. Just cutting the low mids a little bit. So now I'm searching for a riser, like a really nice like white noise riser or something. Let's see if we find one. Like this one is a little bit too mechanical. Not a white noise riser, but still pretty cool. Drag down the volume. So now there's a lot changing. And I think the perk is not in the right tune. So let's tune it perfectly. And now you can duplicate it, switch the starting point and then it will be the same rhythm because it's two bars long and then you pan it to both sides and then you will have more of a stereo feel towards your element. You can do that with shakers as well. Just adding a little bit of echo right there to automate it towards the break. just to create some rhythmic variation. And there's a pretty cool effect called um, Fade to Grey 1-Up from Ableton. And basically this is just whatever you're putting it on, it's just fading it away. And I like to do this on groups. Also the live set is pretty cool. The lead layer is too annoying, too high. So now you realize how like all the drums are fading away, or you're not really realizing it. That's the cool part about this knob. And the impact of the drop isn't that high. I think that's why. That's because um, a lot of instruments are still playing before of it. So the difference between break and drop is not um, huge enough. So now I'm trying to cut all of them. You can do very small bits like that on every 16 bars, which will create a lot of interest. So now I want to create a second bass layer, like a harmony, a fifth above it, but starting at the first drop, so we have a little bit more elements coming in after a while. So let's search a nice sound. They're all way too deep, you need something higher. And now this lead layer is so annoying, we have to cut it. makes no sense. That's what I realized in that moment. Even if you transpose it down, it will not make any sense. Not this time, my friend. Alright, so this is when the time stopped. I couldn't go further with the track. Of course, I would have done a lot more to it. Mixing it properly, making a proper arrangement, um, yeah, getting rid of some 
some weird frequencies and all that stuff. But I think you can get a very long way in a pretty short time if you know what you do. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time on the channel. Bye bye.